What's up guys, I'm LQ, this is the LQ Review, thank you so much for joining me right here at my YouTube channel. This is where we talk about all the geeky, nerdy stuff that we love to talk about, movies, video games, comic books, and TV shows, and right now, I'd like to give you guys my review of the new Netflix original movie, Finding Ohana. And it is not a Lilo and Stitch movie, even though that's kind of what I think of when I hear the word Ohana. Right. Whenever I hear the word Ohana, I think of Lilo and Stitch because it was so it was such a big part of that of those movies and that TV show that um, that, you know, it kind of just makes me harken back to that. But no, it is not a Lilo and Stitch movie. What it is, is a Goonies movie. <laughs> not really. I mean, it's not a Goonies sequel uh, and I don't even think it's a Goonies remake, but it's definitely a movie that is in the spirit of the Goonies. And, and uh, very much, I believe, it was inspired by The Goonies. Now, this is a movie that was not on my radar at all. I was scrolling through Netflix, and, and I happened to just stop scrolling. I think I got a text on my phone. I happened to stop scrolling, and I looked at my phone. And then I looked up, and, and it had stopped on uh, Finding Ohana. And you know how, like, when you stop on a show, it'll start sh Netflix will start showing the trailer for it? Well, that's what happened. The trailer started. And then I was like, what is this? So I actually clicked on it and watched the full trailer. And I was like, this is a Goonies remake. I got really excited. The Goonies is one of my all-time favorite movies. Great Richard Donner film. And, and uh, just one of those staples of my childhood, right? So I was like, this is a Goonies remake. And I watched the trailer. And then I almost immediately started watching the movie. And it involved these. It involves these uh, two kids, um, um, who live in Brooklyn, and a, a young, a younger girl and an older, an older brother. They live in Brooklyn. Their their mom is a widowed mom who took them to Brooklyn, and uh, from Hawaii. You know, they're originally from Hawaii. She took them to Brooklyn, and you know they've been living lives there. The mom is played by Kelly Hugh, and they end up coming back to Hawaii to visit. Um, and while they're there, the little girl, she learns about, um, a local pirate legend that involves, that involves hidden treasure and her and her friend who is, a uh, Casper played by, what's his name? Um, Owen Vaccaro. He plays in the uh, daddy's home movies. Um, her and the boy, they set out to go find the treasure uh, that was that was supposedly hidden inside the mountain by these pirates. And uh, the older brother and the older sister to uh, the the uh, to the boy, they follow them, and the four of them end up meeting up inside the cave, and they end up getting trapped in the cave where they have to keep pressing on. To, in order to get out and in the process they need, need need to keep pressing on to find the treasure and in the in the um throughout the adventure they encounter um booby traps they encounter puzzles they encounter poisonous insects and uh just beautiful set pieces that are located inside and outside of this mountain and and uh there's just a great backstory that they concoct that uh the writers concoct about these pirates that was something that the goonies was always kind of missing you know we never really knew what one-eyed willie's backstory was but in this they they concoct a backstory but they tell it through the eyes of the kids and um it, it's very entertaining and very funny to see that story retold through the eyes of the kids but the movie does have a great sense of adventure and it, like I said, the, the sense of adventure is very Goonie-esque. There's actually a sequence in the movie where they are um, um, climbing on this ledge and the ledge is steeping and goes into lava, right? And it reminded me very much of the piano scene in The Goonies. It was very reminiscent of that, um, to, to the, the sense of, um, of, of terror for the kids. But the sense of adventure for the audience, it all felt very reminiscent of the Goonies. So what this movie did not have that the Goonies had was an antagonist. There was no Fratellis who were chasing the kids. It was all very much done at kind of their own pace uh, 
where they were kind of figuring out the puzzles and and uh, learning the secrets behind the treasure without having a ticking clock behind them that is the Fratellis chasing them. And to me, that's something that it was kind of missing. I would have liked to have seen some sort of antagonist in this movie who was keeping, who kept them moving. And in this, you know, in this movie, you didn't really have that ticking clock that, uh, that the Goonies had. But what this movie had that the Goonies did not have was um, a certain sense of, um, of cultural importance, right? That the Goonies, they were after this treasure to save their, to save their, uh, their housing development, but there wasn't any kind of cultural importance behind it. What we got in, in, uh, Finding Ohana was a movie that really explored what it meant to be Hawaiian, and what it meant to be an indigenous Hawaiian person. And we don't have a whole lot of movies that are about indigenous Hawaiian people. So while I was watching it, I was really, um, I really respected the fact that they kind of dove into Hawaiian mythology and Hawaiian lore. And I even found myself getting on, um, getting on Google and searching up some, you know, looking for some facts on Hawaii. In the movie, one of the, the there's a poisonous spider uh, that uh, called a violin spider, and um, I got online to search for whether or not there were poisonous spider. What was the most poisonous spider in Hawaii? And I found out that there weren't any real poisonous spiders in Hawaii. You got the black widow, um, that uh, you know, a lot of a lot of the continental United States has the black widow. Other than that, there wasn't really any dangerous. Um, spiders in Hawaii and there weren't any dangerous sn snakes really in Hawaii. I think the water moccasin is there. Um, there are no alligators in Hawaii, no crocodiles. There are no predators on the land. You know, your biggest danger on the land is a, um, um, a wild pig. Uh, yeah, outside, it seems like a, a land that is very, um, free from terrestrial predators. Um, you don't really get the big predators until you go into the water. <laughs> uh, so it, it, it piqued my interest in Hawaii enough that I actually found myself pausing the movie and looking up some facts about Hawaii. Um, a place that I've, to, to be fair, I've never been to Hawaii. So, so I definitely, uh, enjoyed it from that point, the cultural aspects of it. Um, another thing that this movie did that the Goonies did not do was it, had a supernatural element to it, especially in the third act. In the third act, you had a certain supernatural, uh, I won't say presence, but there were certain supernatural things that happened during the movie where you realized, okay, this is supernatural. They're not, they're, they're not imagining it. This is actually supposed to be in story, a supernatural thing that's happening. And that's something, like I said, that the Goonies kind of lacked. It, it was very much told in, um, you know, a straightforward manner without any kind of supernatural um, interference, where this movie definitely had that. So from those points of views, it, it, it really um, was a little bit different than The Goonies in that sense, right? It has a supernatural, it has a lot of cultural relevance, but at its heart, it was an adventure film starring kids looking for a pirate treasure that has been hidden for centuries, I think. And, uh, and at its heart, it had that same feeling as the Goonies. Was this better than the Goonies? Was it worse than the Goonies? I don't know. You know, I, I don't know. I, 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 it's going to have a hard time replacing the Goonies for me simply because of the uh, nostalgia factor involved. But if I were to take, you know, a, a 15 year old who's never seen the Goonies and show them this and show them the Goonies, they're probably going to like this better because this is a little more relevant to them. You know, there's cell phones and there's the there's music that's more relevant and the clothing is more relevant. The slang the kids use is more relevant. This is this is truly, I believe, a Goonies for today's audience, for today's young audience. And I, I think that's fine. I think that's fine. You're going to have a lot of people who are going to be like, it will never be as good as the Goonies. It doesn't have to be as good as the Goonies to us. What it has to be is more relevant to the Goonies, to today's audience. And because of that, it'll be better to them. It just will be, it, you know, art is subjective and, and, uh, you know, kids today are going to like this more than, than the Goonies. And that's just the reality of it. And 
I have no problem with that. And I especially have no problem with it because this was good. This was a good movie. And, uh, you know, it's by far, I've only seen a few movies, um, a few new movies so far in 2021. And this is by far my favorite one so far. It was just a lot of fun to watch. And it, it brought me back to those, to those childhood movies where you're watching this adventure play out where there's kids, it's a family movie, but you can feel real, real danger in the, in the action that's happening in the movie. The, there's real peril for the kids even though it is a family movie and you know that at the end everybody's gonna be fine you still got that sense of peril and the movie is called finding ohana and as, if you've seen lilo and stitch you know that ohana means family and this really is a movie about finding that family and and you know this is this is a family our main family in this movie they start the movie kind of estranged and throughout the course of the movie, we also see this family that has been estranged for so long because of a crisis, because of a tragedy in the family. They've been estranged. So throughout the course of the movie, we see this family that's been estranged learn to be a family unit again. And I really appreciated that part of it as well. So this was a very good movie, and I definitely highly recommend it, especially if you're a fan of the Goonies or movies like that. So I'm going to give Finding Ohana a solid A. And I'm surprised. Really, I'm surprised. You know, normally when I see movies that try to be the Goonies, I walk away thinking, well, they tried. And with Finding Ohana, I walk away saying they succeeded. They succeeded. So that's my take on Finding Ohana. What did you think of this movie? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear your take on it. While you're down there, make sure you subscribe to my channel. I put out a lot of content and I want to make sure you're up to date with everything that I'm doing. And as always, I thank you so much for joining me right here at the Yoki Review, where we get to talk about all the geeky, nerdy stuff that we love to talk about. Until next time, we'll see you guys later.